Hello everyone, welcome back again to the Law on Obligations and Contracts. For this video, we will discuss about alternative and facultative obligations covered by Articles 1199 to 1206. So what are alternative obligations? Under the law, an alternative obligation is one wherein various prestations are due, but the performance of one of them is sufficient as determined by the choice which, as a general rule, belongs to the debtor. For example, Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000 pesos. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by giving Cora 10,000 or a colored television set or by painting the house of Cora. So in this particular scenario, there are various prestations that are due. What are those? Number one, 10,000 pesos. Number two, colored television set. And number three, by painting the house of Cora. So there are three prestations which are due in this particular scenario. However, under the uh, rule on alternative obligation, uh, from among these three prestations, only one of them is sufficient in order to comply with the obligation. So, if Donna uh, chooses to, to give Cora 10,000 pesos, then the obligation will be extinguished, even if Donna did not deliver a colored television set or Donna did not paint the house of Cora because, again, under alternative obligation, there are various prestations which are due, but the performance of one of them is sufficient to extinguish the obligation. Now, who has the right of choice in alternative obligation? Under Article 1200, the right of choice belongs to the debtor unless it has been expressly granted to the creditor. So, in the given example, Donna is the debtor here and Cora is the creditor. Therefore, the right of choice belongs to Donna because she is the debtor unless Donna will expressly give the right of choice to Cora. But there are limitations on the right of choice. Number one, the debtor cannot choose those prestations which are number one, impossible, number two, unlawful, number three, which could not have been the object of the obligation. Another limitation is that the debtor has no more right of choice when among the prestations whereby he is alternatively bound, only one is practicable. Lastly, the debtor cannot choose part of one prestation and part of another prestation. So let, let me explain the limitations. For number one, if the prestation is impossible, unlawful, or which cannot have been the object of the obligation, then the prestation is void. However, if only one prestation is impossible, unlawful, or which cannot have been the object of the obligation, the obligation will remain to be valid. Because there are other alternative that can be performed by the debtor. So, what remains in the alternative obligation shall be the subject of choice of the debtor. In the second limitation, in this case, there is not only a limitation but a loss of the right of choice belonging to the debtor. The obligation will become simple. For example, S will deliver to be his horse, or his carabao, or his refrigerator. So the alternative prestations here are the horse, the carabao, or his refrigerator. But then again, the performance of one of them is sufficient to extinguish the obligation. What if, for example, the horse and the carabao were lost without the fault of S? Therefore, only one 
in the alternative prestations remain remain because the carabao and the horse were already lost so ano yung naiwan the refrigerator so since only one is practicable then the debtor should deliver the refrigerator which is the only one practicable and the debtor cannot choose part of one prestation and part of another prestation in the same example the debtor cannot choose part of the horse and part of the carabao as the fulfillment of her obligation because that is what is provided for under the law that the debtor cannot choose part of one prestation and part of another prestation communication of choice under article 1201 the choice shall produce no effect except from the time it has been communicated we said earlier that the right of choice belongs generally to the debtor so if he chooses from among the prestations the, the the exercise of choice will not produce an effect until that choice is communicated to the creditor so there is a need for the debtor to communicate first his choice in order for that choice to be effective so the effect of notice until the choice is made and communicated the obligation remains alternative once the notice of election has been given to the creditor, the obligation ceases to be alter alternative and becomes simple. Kasi isa na lang siya. Kasi, pinil kasi nag-choose na siya from among the alternative prestations. And once communicated, the choice is irrevocable, meaning you cannot change it anymore. You cannot change it. Um, either party cannot change it without the consent of the other. For example, Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000 pesos. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by giving Cora 10,000 or a colored television set or by painting the house of Cora. Again, the alternative prestations here are the 10,000 pesos, a colored television set, or by painting the house of Cora. Again, the right of choice belongs to Donna. What if Donna chose a colored television set for the payment of her obligation? Again, applying the rule, the, right, uh, the exercise of choice will not produce an effect until the same has been communicated to the creditor. So Donna should communicate her choice to Cora in order for the uh, choice or the alter in order for the, the choice to be effective. After communicating the, the decision or the, the, the choice of Donna to Cora, then the obligation will cease to become alternative and it will become a simple obligation. When debtor may rescind contract, under Article 1203, if through the creditor's acts the debtor cannot make a choice according to the terms of the obligation, the latter may rescind the contract with damages. Rescission creates the obligation to return the things which were the, the object of the contract together with their fruits and the price with its interest. It is the very nature of an alternative obligation that the debtor can make his choice without the consent of the creditor. Hence, the right given to the debtor to rescind the contract and recover damages if, through the creditor's fault, he cannot make a choice according to the terms of the obligation. The debtor, however, is not bound to rescind. For example, Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by giving Cora 10,000 or a colored television set or by painting the house of Cora. Again, the alternative prestations here are 
10,000, a colored television set, or by painting the house of Cora. So, Donna could deliver the 10,000 or the colored television set or she could paint the house of Cora. It depends upon her choice. But if through the fault of Cora, one item is destroyed, then Donna can rescind the contract if she wants. So let us say, for example, Cora, through the fault of Cora, the colored television set was destroyed. So in this case, Donna has the right to rescind the contract. So in case of precision, the amount of 10,000 must be returned by Donna with interest and Cora in turn must pay the value of the colored television set plus damages. So magkakaroon na ngayon ng recession which means that the party should return what they have received no, in the obligation. However, balikan natin that the debtor is not bound to rescind. So, hindi naman siya required no, to rescind the contract. Dahil may naiwan pa naman kasi yung nawala is yung colored television set lang. So, Donna may choose between 10,000 pesos or painting the house of Cora if she doesn't uh, opt to rescind the contract. Ayan. Effects of loss of objects of obligation. Uh, diba we said earlier that in alternative obligations, there are several prestations. There are two or more prestations. So what if, for example, some of the objects of the obligation are lost or all of the objects of the obligation are lost? So what are the rules? If some of the objects are lost, or have become impossible, even through the fault of the debtor, the debtor is not liable since he has the right of choice and the obligation can still be performed. Uh, let us say, for example, in this given example, Donna borrowed from Cora. Uh, uh, let us see if we have an example. Ah, we have an example here. Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000 pesos. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by giving Cora 10,000 colored television set or by painting the house of Cora. So, what if, for example, the, uh, the prestation colored television set was lost and the house was lost? So, there is nothing to paint anymore. Even if the loss was through the fault of the debtor, Donna is not liable for damages. Why? Because take note that the right of choice belongs to Donna. So she can just choose what is the remainder in the prestation. So what remains is the 10,000 pesos. So even if nawala yung colored television set or yung house ni Cora, even if that is through the fault of Donna, Donna is not liable kasi meron pa namang isang prestation. And take note, she has the right of choice. Unless of course, Binigay niya yung choice kay Cora. What if, for example, all of the objects are lost? If all of them have been lost or have become impossible through his fault, or meaning through the fault of the debtor, the creditor shall have the right to indemnity for damages since the obligation can no longer be complied with. Unlike in the first instance where only some of the objects are lost, if the objects are lost, all lost, meaning lahat nawala, so if that is through the fault of the debtor, then the debtor uh, this time is liable for damages. Bakit? Kasi hindi na makomply yung obligation. What if all of the objects are lost through fortuitous events? So alam naman natin that uh, no person shall be held responsible for those events which could not be foreseen or which though foreseen are inevitable. And therefore, 
in these cases the obligation is extinguished what if for example the right of choice was expressly given to the creditor let's go back to the general rule we say we said that the right of choice belongs to the debtor but the rare exception when expressly given by the debtor to the creditor then the right of choice will now belong to the creditor so the governing article is article 1205 which provides that when the choice has been expressly given to the creditor the choice shall cease to be alternative from the day when the selection has been communicated to the debtor until then the responsibility of the debtor should be governed by the following rules number one if one of the things is lost through a fortuitous event he shall perform the obligation by delivering that which the creditor should choose from among the remainder or that which remains if only one subsists because here the loss is through a fortuitous event so the creditor can just choose no from among the remainder if the loss of one of the things occurs through the fault of the debtor the creditor may claim any of those subsisting or the price of that which through the fault of the former has disappeared with the right to damages so there is damages now because uh, the loss here was through the fault of the debtor if all the things are lost through the fault of the debtor the choice by the creditor shall fall upon the price of any one of them also with indemnity for damages the same rules shall be applied to obligations to do or not to do in case one some or all of the prestations should become impossible so for example when the thing is lost Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000 pesos. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by giving Cora computer set, a colored television set, or a car. So take note here that the alternative prestations are number one, the computer set, a colored television set, or a car. So there are three prestations. But then again, in alternative obligation, the performance of one is sufficient to extinguish the obligation what if for example item one meaning the computer set was lost through a fortuitous event so nawala yung computer set due to fortuitous event let us say for example nagkaroon ng flood so the computer set was destroyed by flood and because of that uh, destruction the computer set is no longer functioning so it was lost so the remaining prestations are the colored television set and the car so since the loss was through a fortuitous event cora the creditor may choose only from among the remainder so pwede siyang mamili it's either colored television set or car without the right to demand for damages kasi nga the loss was due to a fortuitous event. But what if, for example, the loss was due to the debtor's fault? Meaning, kasalanan ni Donna kung bakit nawala yung computer set. So ngayon, ano yung right ni Cora? Cora may choose from among the remainder, it's either colored television set or the car, with right to be indemnified or uh, with uh, damages so plus damages yan siya or Cora may choose the value of the computer set which was lost due to the fault of Donna plus damages what if all the things are lost through the debtor's fault lahat nawala ni Donna yung computer set colored television set and the car what will happen if all the items are lost through the fault of Donna then Cora can demand the payment of the price of any one of them with a right to indemnity for damages. So Cora may choose either 
the value of the computer set or the value of the colored television set or the value of the car plus uh, the right to indemnity for damages. But what if, for example, all the things were lost through a fortuitous event, meaning Donna has no fault no? sa pagkawala ng mga prestation. So what will happen? The obligation of Donna shall be extinguished if all the item, items which are alternatively the object of the obligation are lost through a fortuitous event. Because we, let's go back to the principle of fortuitous event. Sabi ng Article 1174, no person shall be held responsible for those events which could not be foreseen or which though foreseen are inevitable. And take note that these rules shall equally apply to obligations to do or not to do. No, in case some or all of the prestations should become impossible. Now, our last uh, topic for this video is the facultative obligation. So what is a facultative obligation? It is one where only one prestation has been agreed upon, but the obligor may render another in substitution. So the key word here is substitution. For example, Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000 pesos. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by substituting a computer set. So take note here, only one prestation has been agreed upon, which is the 10,000 pesos. But accordingly, Donna could substitute a computer set. So effect of loss. Before substitution, okay, if the principal thing is lost through a fortuitous event, the obligation is extinguished. Why? Because uh, there is yet no substitution. But if the principal thing is lost through the fault of the debtor, then the debtor is liable for damages. The loss of the substitute with or without fault of the debtor does not render him liable because this is before substitution, meaning to say the substitute is not yet the principal obligation. For example, Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000 pesos. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by substituting a computer set. So, if for example, before substitution, Donna, the 10,000 pesos was lost through a fortuitous event. Um, but then again, no, 10,000 pesos is a money. It is a generic thing. It cannot be lost. But uh, let us say for purposes of illustration only that the 10,000 pesos can be lost. Let us, let us presume, okay? Although under the law, money can't be lost because it is a generic thing. But for purposes of illustration, let us say, for example, 10,000 pesos can be lost. So, for example, it was lost through a fortuitous event. Then, the obligation of Donna to deliver the 10,000 pesos is now extinguished because the loss was through a fortuitous event. But if the 10,000 pesos was lost through the fault of Donna, then Donna shall be liable to pay 10,000 pesos plus damages. If, for example, the substitute, which is the computer set, was lost with or without the fault of Donna, okay, then there is no effect, okay? There is no effect. Donna will have no liability over the loss of the computer set. Why? Because the loss was uh, occurred or the loss occurred before substitution. The principal thing due is still the 10,000 pesos. What if the loss occurred after substitution? What will happen? Under the law, if the principal thing is lost, the debtor is not liable whatever may be the cause of the loss. Um, may it be through fortuitous event or through the fault of Donna. 
but since it is on already after substitution, then even if the principal thing is lost, walang liability si debtor. But if what is lost is the substitute, the liability depends upon whether or not the loss is due to the debtor's fault. So may kabaliktaran na siya na effect. For example, now the same example kanina, Donna borrowed from Cora 10,000 pesos. It was agreed that Donna could comply with her obligation by substituting a computer set. Let us say, for example, Donna substituted the computer set. And then, after the substitution of the computer set, the 10,000 pesos was lost. So, ano yung rule? Walang liability si Donna kasi na substitute na niya yung computer set. The computer set now will become the principal obligation. But if the substitute is lost after substitution, then we will check if the loss was due to the fault of the debtor or not. If it is due to the fault of the debtor, then Donna will be liable for the value of the computer set plus damages. But if it is not through the fault of Donna or it is uh, due to fortuitous event, then the obligation shall be extinguished. Now let us distinguish alternative obligation from facultative obligation. In alternative obligation, there are several prestations which are due, but compliance with one is sufficient. In facultative obligation, only one is due, although the debtor is allowed to substitute it. In alternative obligation, the right of choice belongs to the debtor and may be given to the creditor. But in facultative obligation, the right to make substitution belongs only to the debtor. So the debtor cannot give the right of choice to the creditor in facultative obligation. The loss of one or more of the alternatives through fortuitous event does not extinguish the obligation. In facultative obligation, the loss of the thing due extinguishes the obligation. In the alternative obligation, the loss of one alternative through the fault of the debtor does not render him liable because the right of choice belongs to the debtor. He can choose from among the remainders. On the other hand, in facultative obligation, the loss of the thing due through the fault of the, of the debtor makes him liable. Because here, only one prestation is due. Lastly, where the choice belongs to the creditor, the loss of one alternative through the fault of the creditor gives rise to liability. On the other hand, the loss of the substitute before substitution through the fault of the debtor does not render him liable. So, that ends our discussion for alternative and facultative obligations. Let's see each other again for our next video in Law and Obligations and Contracts. Goodbye!